Hey guys, I want to give you a channel update, the quarantine version. So what have I been up to the last four weeks or so? Basically, I've been taking care of my daughter, Penny. Luckily, my wife has been able to still work from home, uh, but my work has been completely wiped out. And also our daycare is closed. So basically, uh, that leaves me to take care of my daughter. Shout out to all the childcare workers out there, particularly the single parents. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of energy taking care of a kid. And I don't know how single parents do it, uh, juggling all of that, plus trying to work um, and make an income as well. So be nice to all the childcare workers and the single parents out there. But beyond that, you never know what anybody's going through, um, especially in this time. Uh, it's very stressful. It kind of makes you realize that when people act out aggressively towards you for no other reason, you never really know what they're going through. They might be going through something very tough or difficult to deal with. I mean, me and my wife, we actually... Over the past three, four weeks of quarantining, we've had some fights. We are actually in a, a fairly good position in terms of work and um, savings and whatnot. But yeah, even the stress gets to us. So uh, we, we had some fights. We did work through them. And even our daughter was feeling the stress of all this. Um, she lashed out. She had several tantrums. The first one uh, lasted like an hour and a half at like midnight to like 2 a.m. and she was just screaming. We were trying to pull out all the stops, you know, give her her favorite foods. Do you want graham crackers? And she'd be like, yes, I want graham crackers. And then we'd try to give it to her and then she'd scream at us like, no, I don't want the graham crackers. And it's like, what do you want? It took us, it was, it was very stressful, but it took us some time to realize that it's because her life has been flipped upside down as well. She went to daycare every day. She played with her friends every day. And now all of a sudden, Every day is a weekend, you know, it's just me and my wife taking care of Penny. So she was definitely feeling the tantrums. And, and I've read in several other social media posts that other parents have been going through this as well. And uh, it was it was difficult, but we're thankful that it's not just us. It's not just our daughter. I swear I thought she was like bipolar or something. But we're kind of settling down into this new life uh, for all of us. We've gotten over the fights. I'm learning every day how to get Penny to do uh, what I want her to do. It's been like three weeks of playing hostage negotiator. You know, you're everything's on the line. It's very tricky situations and you're just trying to negotiate, get the other person to do what you want. And so that's what I felt like it was like, eat the food or take a bath or or go out and play or stop watching TV. I mean, that was, yeah, that, that took a lot of energy out of me. I didn't realize how much. And that's where my stress came from. Also, the other part of it was, there was so much that I wanted to do uh, in terms of like uh, my own work. I wanted to like organize my files. My hard drive folders have been a mess over the last few years of working. My folders and documents and pictures were all kind of like put here and there. I never got around to organizing all of that. And it's just been like a mental clutter, right? Um, and, a, and a digital clutter as well. But, you know, there's things like that. And like there's other stuff that I wanted to do uh, during this quarantine period, but I've had to put all of that aside and put all my energy into taking care of my daughter. So a couple years back, we took a trip up to Canada uh, to th the Thousand Islands area. It's beautiful, by the way. And the reason I wanted to go there was I wanted to get this one shot. I saw this one picture on Instagram, and I'll, I'll put it here. Um, and it was just stunning. So I just wanted to get this one shot. And even that I couldn't get because when you have family with you, especially a first child, uh, it's very difficult to get kids to do what you want. I've learned that those situations cause stress. It is expectations and what you actually achieve. How close do you get to achieving those expectations? And if you fall short, that is where the stress and anxiety and the fights come from, right? And so the way I've learned to deal with that kind of stress, set your expectations, but then don't have any expectations at all. <laughs> and so when you have no expectations, there's nothing to be disappointed about. That's been a, kind of a way I've been dealing with my job now, taking care of my daughter, is have no expectations. Don't set any goals. Focus solely on taking care and being present with uh, Penny. Because goals are future, right? Because the kind of person I am, I'm a visionary. I, I like to envision how things play out. I like to envision things in the future, goals. My mind is always in the future, but it's very hard for me to be in the present. It's very hard for me to kind of enjoy what's going on in front of me. So uh, this, this whole exercise in, in trying to not put any expectations, 
it actually has allowed me to slowly let go of the anxiety of the future and just be fully present and enjoy my time uh, playing with Penny and, and just watching her grow and stuff. So that's what I've been up to personally. Have we thought of leaving New York? My parents don't live in New York. They live in a beautiful suburb house. And we did think about leaving um, New York a while back before it got crazy. Uh, but ultimately, we decided to just stay. But now that we've been thinking about it, this whole quarantine, this whole social distancing thing, it's gonna, it's not going to be over in a couple weeks. It's going to last probably months, um, well into the summer. Uh, it's going to be a long time, basically. So... I think at some point we're going to try to self-quarantine for two weeks and then head down to my parents just to break up the monotony and uh, just give some more breathing room for us. So we'll probably head down at some point. So channel updates. Uh, it's been very difficult to do anything channel related. Again, been busy taking care of Penny. I was able to put out a few videos on unemployment and also the tax because that's uh, what my other free time has been doing is trying to get our taxes done and also... Uh, looking up the unemployment application and SBA and the PPP and all of that research. That's what I've been doing outside of that. Also, Golf Rival. <laughs> yeah, that's been a fun game. But before all of this, um, I was trying to do a whole comprehensive series on uh, photography school. I went to Brooks Institute, which was an amazing photo school. Um, and I was lucky enough to have gone before they shut down. And I really enjoyed my time there. I learned a lot and... I have all my files saved, or at least most of it. And so what I wanted to do was basically go through each one of my classes, go through all the lessons, go through assignments, and share what I did for the assignments. And if you wanted to shoot the assignments, you know, I, I actually did create a Facebook group. So if you want to join, uh, there'll be a link down below. Um, but I wanted to create that Facebook group so I could release the photo assignment videos and then have you guys share and then we can all critique, talk about the photos. And, and basically these assignments would line up with the lessons uh, for each of the classes. So I was going to start with photo 101 and go all the way to photo 400, whatever it was, talk about the lesson, talk about the assignment. It would all be thematic and fun. So I know there's Ted Forbes is doing the photo assignments again. I wish I could join, but again, I just don't have enough time. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun, but hopefully at some point I can get this whole photo school series going. But the larger picture, the main reason I created this channel uh, was to document my life. Times like these, you know, we it's been a time of reflection for a lot of people, and it kind of really makes you realize that life is passing you by. We've been just crazy busy, just living life, trying to make money and trying to get that next, you know, thing, next house, next car, next um, retirement or whatever. You know, we've been doing the grind and this whole pause uh, that this whole world is, seems to be going through, it just kind of gives us time to reflect on life. And for me, it was a realization that I made a few years back that life is indeed short. And I wanted to document all the things that I've learned, all the stories that I've lived and record it somehow. I shared this in a video a while back. You know, think about a funeral. Typically somebody goes up and gives a eulogy and they share, you know, funny stories and memories of the person. And then I realized like, there's no way one person can remember all of the stories and moments that you've lived. And so with that, I said, screw that. I want to speak for myself. You know, I want to... I want to create content where I share as much about my life as I can in my own words before I pass. And, you know, we never know what when our time is up. And so the time is now. And so I encourage you, start documenting your life. Start telling your stories um, so that one day your loved ones... For me, it's Penny and any other kids we might have. One day I hope that she, future kids, grandkids, great-grandkids can be able to see who I was in my age that I am now, not when I'm, when we hear grandfather, we think, we just picture, you know, old person, white hair, frail. But I want to document my life now, you know, basically dig into my hard drives, try to tell as many stories and, and share as much as I can up until this point. Who knows how long that'll take. But then once that's done, you know, I can share as I age, so to speak. But yeah, one of the main influences for me was Jeremy Cowart. I saw him speak at a Photo Plus Expo once, several years back, and he shared, you Google your grandparents and you likely won't find anything. Uh, you Google your parents, 
I don't know, maybe one thing um, if you're lucky, but you Google you, uh, you're going to have all these tweets, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, um, TikToks, whatever. You're going to have all this content around you that your kids are going to be able to see one day, potentially. What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? And so for me, um, I think ultimately is to help people to have lived my life and share it so that other people can benefit from it. So with that, uh, I think I'll sign off here. Go ahead, click that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. And click subscribe to stay tuned for more videos on photography and life. My brain is fried. Oh, do you like my new background? I moved that background to over here. Still, still figuring it out. So this line is a little weird. I don't know if, I don't know. Anyway, till next time. See ya.